Hey guys, it's Ace from the Install Bay. We're going to do a Raider replacement on this Volvo XC90, so stay tuned. A while back, we had done an Instagram picture of a radio and an XC90, and some of you guys were like, holy crap, I didn't know you could do that. Uh, so you'd ask, and you'd send me your email, and I'd send you a PDF, because we have pretty good notes on this car, of how to do it. Well, we finally got another one in, so we're going to go ahead and show you guys how it's done. So let's get to it. So for this particular install, we're going to install the Single Den Pioneer CD player. Uh, but the process works the same for a double den. They just didn't want to go with a double den. It's no big deal. So for this one, because it is a single den, we can use the best kits. This is the BKVO4150B dash kit. Uh, if you want to do a double den, you're going to have to go with the metric kit, which I'll link to right here. Okay. The other thing you're going to need is no wiring harness. There is no wiring harness for the car. You're actually going to have to make your own. So the first thing you want to do is move the passenger seat as far back as possible. There's an amp underneath here that we're going to need to get to. Next thing you're going to want to do is disconnect the battery. In most cars it says to disconnect the battery, but people don't. In this car, definitely disconnect the battery, or you're gonna get a bunch of trouble lights at the end of the day. It's totally not worth it. You don't need it for anything past this point anyway. All right, so you need a rag of some kind. Go ahead and put it right here. Panel tool. Just get up in here and pry in this a little bit. This will come up. Go ahead and put the car in gear. Make sure battery's disconnected. Can't stress that enough. Go ahead and pull this back. You just need the rag to cover so you don't scratch anything here. Now there's four Torx screws right here. You want the bottom two, not the top two. So go ahead and unscrew those. And they're T25s before you ask. Now what we want to do is pull up on the whole thing. Okay. Now we're going to grab another washcloth. Okay, drop it down. Grab and pull. Get the washcloth up and underneath it. Okay, now we just need to start unplugging. So now that we have it on the bench, we want to pull all these T25 torque screws out and remove it from this whole apparatus. This is the command center for the radio. We are going to need to reinstall this back in the car, but we'll get to that in a minute. Take the air conditioner out, set it aside. Go ahead and pull the CD player out. Okay, so we have the basic structure of what we need now. We need to do some cutting. So the new kit, basically single or double bend, there again, doesn't matter. It's going to use these factory clips to go into these holes here in order to click in like this. But what we need to do is remove all of this stuff here. So just clip it in to get an idea of what you're dealing with before you go at it with your saw. Now for this kind of work, I like to use a saw. You can use whatever you would like.
All right, so now we want to go ahead and reinstall the air conditioner. And install the dash kit. All right, so there's like no screws that hold this in at all. It's, it's really kind of a, eh, yeah, you get it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some glue along these areas here so that this stays put. And if you'll notice too, well you might not be able to, but if you see right here, see this right here? It's, it's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. So. So when using CA, CA basically there's two parts. There's an activator and the glue itself. This is uh, this is a little trick I learned from Soundman. It's these cool little bottles. I'll put a link to them in the show notes. Um, this allows you to be a little bit more precise when you're adding the activator so you don't get it all over the place. All right, so we got it all together. Let's go ahead and mount the radio in it. Okay, so the easy part's done. Let's move on to the fun stuff. All right, so this is the main control panel of the radio. What we wanna do is take this apart because we need to mount this back in the car. This is the best way we've found to keep any lights from coming on is to just put this back in. All right, so we have it down to the three main pieces. As I said, we like to retain these three pieces. This is just what works. You may only need to put this in. We're just not willing to try it, because uh, there again, we don't want any lights. So let's show you how we button this thing up so it doesn't become an issue. So what you end up with when you're done is this cool blue ball here. You just want to make sure you have access to the green plug here as well as the fiber optic here. Now the fact that it's all taped up, this will allow you to, if the customer or you want to put it back into the car, all you have to do is peel off this tape. Nothing is scratched because where this is going to go is really tight and it could scratch the radio uh, and we don't want that to happen because not everyone, you know, you decide you might want to sell it tomorrow. All right, so we'll set this aside. All right, so underneath the passenger seat is the factory amplifier. We want to go ahead and remove that. There's three 10 millimeter bolts we need to remove first. So you want to make sure you unplug all of these. So now what we have is the power and ground for the radio. We have the speaker wires for the radio all located right here. This harness isn't going to be used. Now what we need to do is we're going to pull this side of the car apart here and we're going to route this back up to behind the radio. So all the wires that are underneath the seat are run right here along this side. This is them right here. So we're gonna go ahead and cut this tape here and we can pull all this goo up and bring it in behind the radio. So we're gonna get power on ground like we said from underneath the seat at the amplifier. So what we've done is we've taken and put in a fuse holder with a 10 amp fuse, attached it to a power wire. We got power on ground. 
Now we're just going to take some loom and loom it up to keep the wire safe. Alright, so we're pretty much done with all the wiring and whatnot that needs to be done underneath the seat here. We have the wires run into the dash that we're going to run. We're going to plug the amplifier back in. So now we need to tap the accessory wire, and for that we're going to use the purple wire at the cigarette lighter. Now, unfortunately, I haven't been able to find a plug for this, so we're gonna have to cut these wires. Now, you'll notice when you're looking at your plug, there's three wires with gray and gray-red, and two wires with gray and gray-white. One of the gray-reds is thinner, and that's for the center channel that we're gonna lose. So, the others are for the front and rear. Now, just go ahead and cut them far enough down so that if you need to, you can put the harness back together. So because we can't use the factory antenna, we're just gonna add one of these window mount antennas from Best Kits. It's a BAWM200. And what this is, is a window mount antenna. We're gonna stick it on the front window. So it's amplified, it's got power and ground. And it's this little guy right here. We're gonna to try to do is stick it up behind the A pillar so you don't actually see it. Now, so to prep this, we do need to make this, this ground a little bit longer. It's a little bit too short for where we need to put it. All right, so we've got it all prepped and ready to go. Let's take it into the car. Okay, so after looking around and trying to find the best spot, we're actually just going to go right here underneath the headliner with it. Um, we've peeled off the tape, so we're just going to go ahead and put it in like this. And while we're up here, we'll go ahead and put the Bluetooth mic in. I like to put my Bluetooth mics by the rear view mirror, personal preference. Uh, just make sure when you're doing it that the visor doesn't get in the way of the microphone. So we went ahead and soldered in our wiring harness. He shrinked it up. Uh, we used the 9 volt battery trick to test to see which was right and left. Uh, the reds are front, the red stripes that is, the white stripes are rear. Um, so now we're just going to go ahead and finish up this harness. Alright, so we got the factory radio, or what's left of it. We're going to go ahead and plug this back in. Let's get the radio.
Now that we have the dash back in, we've got our radio plugged in, all the harnesses are plugged back into the car. At this point, we can go ahead and connect the battery back up. Now, I will say this about when you're going to do this and there's a double DIN, because the double DIN will be screwed in, which like this we could slide out, makes getting it in. The double DIN, you do have to finesse it in a little better, uh, but there's plenty of room behind the radio for the double DIN to fit. It's, it's not that hard, it's just getting it in, this thing, um, at that point you may want to take this off for the double DIN because you really, it's, it's got to come down a lot more because there's a lip right here that it kind of slides up under. AC's blowing, there's no check engine lights on. So now that we know it's all playing, we're going to get out and just put our ears on speakers make sure all the speakers are playing. We got sound, so we'll go ahead and detach this, we'll push it in. We're going to go ahead and get these two screws in and we'll put it all back together. Alright guys, that brings this one to a close. So if you got one of these cool Volvos and you want to put a radio in it, now you know how. <sighs> all right, we do these things five days a week. Give us a thumbs up, subscribe, do all that cool YouTube thing, ring the bell, I don't know. Uh, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. Yeah, that's all of them. You guys have a good night. We will see you later next time. Bye.